I'm Evan Nussbaum, Vice President, Chief Procurement and Training Officer with StoneSource. Today we're going to look at what acid does to different materials, and by acids we could talk about uh, common household items like lemons and tomatoes and wine and vinegar and coffee and cola and different things that uh, do and will come into contact with your natural stone surfaces. I'm going to start here with a low-grade cement remover, which is a pretty intense acid. Uh, it's diluted with a couple parts water, and what this is going to replicate is what it's like to leave a lemon cut in half upside down on a stone surface for 48 to 72 hours and the surface has not been sealed. So it's a pretty negligent act, but it really underscores the point of the stone's acid sensitivity. So what we're going to be looking for is a white bubbling on these materials. So I'm going to start on the left hand side here with a dark colored limestone. Now limestone comes from organic material, uh, which means things that have lived. So there's a lot of shells, fossils, and you see all that white bubbling that's on there now? That's an acid reaction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe that off, and when that dries, you're going to see a pretty heavy acid etch on that material. Now I'm going to do the same thing on a honed white marble right here, and you see the same kind of reaction. So you see the white bubbling. But when materials etch, they tend to etch white. Now I'm doing it on a polished white marble. You also see that white bubbling. And now I'm going to do it on a brown colored marble where you also see that white bubbling. But remember, when things acid etch, they tend to etch white. So you can see here the limestone has already turned a light color. The honed marble shows less of a change because it etches white. doesn't mean it reacts any less to acid, it just means the aesthetic quality of it uh, does not appear as apparent as it would otherwise on a darker material with the same kind of mineral makeup. High percentage of calcium and magnesium carbonate is what that organic matter becomes when it becomes stone and that's what's reacting to the acid. You find calcium carbonate in things like aspirin, toothpaste, soy milk, almond milk, it's a, it's a lot of the calcium that's in that and it's because it will react with your stomach acid and dissolve. But here's the polished white marble and you'll see that took the polish right off. You can see that. If you catch it in the right light, it kind of hones the material. So that's part of the reason why a lot of people prefer honed white marble surfaces if they are going to use marble in the kitchen. Now on the dark marble, again, it's not that it had any more or less of a reaction. It's just that aesthetically it's going to be a lot more apparent. So when that dries, it's going to look a lot more like the, the, the big white spot you have on that limestone. You could already see that starting to happen. So now let's look at silicious materials. When I say silicious, I mean silica-based, so sand, quartz, feldspar, mica, things that have never lived, inorganic materials. Here's a sandstone, no reaction, remember, we're looking for the white bubbling. Here's a quartzite that's dark, no reaction. Here's a quartzite that's light, no reaction. This is about as light as quartzite's going to get, which is why a lot of people do prefer marble for these applications, because they are a light, lot whiter if you want a natural stone. Uh, this is a man-made agglomerate, so if you want something really white, there are man-made agglomerate options. That will have no, no reaction to acid, because that's quartz and resin. Uh, here's a schist, a soapstone, and a basalt. You see no reaction on any of those. However, when we wipe them clean, you'll see differing measures of porosity. So. Uh, most of the materials will come clean and dry very quickly. The basalt will leave behind a little residue, but when that dries out, there'll be no change, no chemical change to the material. 